Constitutional and Electoral Reform Advisor Kate Sullivan was appointed by the FCO to put forward proposals for constitutional electoral reform in the TCI and to consult the island's community on these issues. Sullivan revealed her recommendations during several town hall meetings on every island during October of this year, and residents shared strong views on many of those recommendations. After making a few changes to the proposed recommendations, she has released a second draft. In the second draft, the biggest change made was to her initial recommendation of enlarging the franchise here in the TCI by allowing persons with PRCs residing here for over 10 years to be allowed to vote and obtain belongership status after five years of holding a PRC. This was rejected by the public. Sullivan now states that giving them the right to vote was not her recommendation, but she did suggest that holding a PRC for five years can grant you a belongership status. That that is not what the original recommendation said, um, because the original recommendation really did hope that there would be a process for belongership in place, meaning that the possible transitional element to the recommendation wouldn't be needed if that process was in place. Now, certainly what I heard during the public meetings and in um, submissions people made to me was that there's a lot of support through the whole TCI community for putting a belongership process in place. So I don't think that there's a lot of barriers to that happening. So I didn't think I needed the transitional part of the recommendation anymore. In a revised recommendation, Sullivan has now added that a person should hold a PRC for five to ten years before granted the opportunity to apply for belongership. She advocates that belongership should be defined in the Constitution as it is currently not, which has been the main issue of contention here in the TCI. She also added that persons should hold a BOTC status and be of good character and is neither bankrupt nor under sentence. Sullivan, in her initial recommendation, also sought changes to the qualification of the deputy governor, stating, quote, The deputy governor's role should not be restricted to belongers and should be subject to an open merit-based competition. In a revised recommendation, she has taken the concerns of TCI residents and noted that the deputy governor's role should be subject to an open merit-based competition but should remain reserved for belongers. Sullivan also, in her initial recommendations, listed governance principles to be added to the role of the governor. In this revised draft, she stated that she has amended this recommendation by removing that list by request of the people. Quote, I had proposed a new system of governance principles to guide the actions of the entire TCI government, governor, premier, and other ministers. Consultation showed a clear wish for there to be TCI involvement in the drafting and consideration of the principles, so I have amended the mechanism proposed so that the Secretary of State would consult the TCI government before issuing a statement of governance principles or any amendments to an existing statement. The principles could be amended by the Secretary of State at any time, including on the initiative of the TCI. A few other changes were made, but these were some of the most significant. Sullivan stated in yesterday's telepress conference that she hopes members of the TCI community have noticed that through this revision their views have been taken into consideration and are reflected in this revision. She says that submissions can still be sent in until January 14th, just before UK ministers make a final decision on changes to be made to the TCI's constitution. She ended that no more town hall meetings will be held, which was always the plan after releasing her first set of recommendations and receiving views from local residents. For WIV4 News, I'm Amanda Miller.